Hello, and welcome to episode 9 of Crystal T Knits. This is a knitting and crochet podcast. My name's Tara, and you can follow me on Instagram and Ravelry at Crystal T Knits. I also have an Etsy store, and there's also a group in Ravelry for this program that's called Crystal T Knits. I'm hoping to do a knit along soon, so I would go and look that up and join so you know when all the knit alongs are happening. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can know when all my episodes are coming up. And we're going to have some exciting news at the end of this podcast. I'm very excited about this. So stay tuned for that. And I'm sorry it's been so long since I've podcasted. It's been about a month and a half, I think, since I've done it. I mean, Easter's been happening. I've been trying to get my son in school, and I've been trying to get my mother's retirement papers going. So it's been a lot of drama, lots, lots of drama. You know how it is with paperwork when you have to do stuff, especially when you're trying to do everything by yourself. So it's a little insane around here. So I finally got to do this. I've done a lot of knitting. I'm very excited. I actually have a whole lot of FOs, like crazy amount of FOs. I just can't believe how many I have. So the first one I've got is going to be something I cast it on, and it's an FO. It is my Vintage Fairy Light Socks from Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. I'm very excited about these. I made them short. Because of that, I've noticed that I always go for my Ilsa socks, and they're shorties, and I like shorty socks. So I've decided to start making all my socks shorty, so I wear them because I'm just not wearing the snowflakes that much because I always like this length. So this is the Cozy Knitter, and it's the Hydrania Bloom colorway. What I did over here, though, well, I had, she comes with this purple over here. For the cuff and the heel and the toe, but I decided not to use it on the toe. But over here, I had some um, white yarn left over from my, um, what was that? I Smell Snow Shawl and the Snow Melt Shawl from Azura Knits. It's the Un Naturel colorway. So I decided to make the fairy lights in that color so it represents the lights. And then this is the light casting off from it. So it's multicolors casting off from the lights. I thought that would be something interesting. Everyone seems to do this in a solid color way. And any socks I knit is always usually from um, the Cozy Knitter. And she has all these stripes. So I just thought it would be something different to do. A little fun thing. And I tried making it in the purple originally. But it just it, it wasn't coming out that popping. So I thought the white sparkle would pop for lights. And then the rest of the lights coming out. So I'm actually really happy how this came out. I'm dying to wear them. I haven't worn them because I didn't want them to get dirty before I showed it to you. So now I can wear them, so I'm very excited about that. And I used, I think, a size 1 needle. I end up using size 1 needle all the time I knit socks because I knit it weird. And I also, I, um, I cast it on 48 stitches for this. Don't ask. It's odd. I don't know why that keeps happening to me. And another FO I made. I might as well do all the socks together is gonna be my Peachy Keen socks. Yes, I finished them. They are again, Cozy Knitter. And it is my Hermione Everyday Socks. The pattern is from, who is it from? Erica Lederman. And again, it's a size one needle. I think I cast it on for this one, 50 stitches. That's what, I usually do 50 or 52. No, is it 52? Yeah, 50 or 52 stitches I usually cast on for my socks. But because the way the pattern on the fairy lights came out, I had to go down to 48. I was scared it was going to be too tight, but they actually fit really nice. So maybe I'll do 48 from now on. I don't know. This is my peachy keen. I kind of wish I made these in ankle socks. I really do, because I probably would wear them a lot more. I might end up getting another um, colorway. This I just love this colorway. And make it into ankle socks one day. I loved it. This was an easy knit. If you want an easy sock go for this. It's beautiful. I really enjoyed knitting this. It was just so much fun. And I couldn't wait. To, I, I think I did this really fast, actually, this sock. It was just, it was just a joy to knit. Both socks were a joy to knit, but I liked this one better. It's just more fun. It was a lot of texture going on, because you can see all the texture is going. It's just a really cute sock. And it has Harry Potter inspired, which is always fun. Love Harry. Okay, oh, what I'm wearing is my Lady Russell shawl. It is by Joy Garrett. It's from the Jane Austen Knits program. And it is Sublime Yarns Lustrous Fine Extra Merino DK Colorways L'Oreal. I made this a long time ago. And I just decided to wear it. I haven't really... I iron blocked this. I iron 
wet block is, so that's why it's curling under. What's interesting about the shawl, is I'll show you. First, you make it like a triangular. So you make it like that. And then, over here, you pick up stitches, and then you knit this panel going on. And then and you do on the same side and on the other. Same thing on the other side. And then you have a little ruffle that you, I think you picked up stitches for that too. So the ruffle goes all the way around. This is actually one of my favorite shawls. I love it. It's one of my favorite yarns. I'm so upset that Sublime discontinued it. I have like a sick, sick amount stored up in my basement. It's insane how much of this yarn I have. And I'm hoping to make another shawl soon in this, in the um, pink colorway that they have. I just love this. And it's so nice and warm and soft and has a little sheen to it. Can you see the sheen? See, it has a nice little sparkle to it, but it's not actually Stellina in it. So I thought it was different than the other yarns I had. This is actually my first good yarn I ever used, too. I fell in love with it when it came out. I went crazy buying it. It's obs I have it in every color, practically, that they made, except for the browns. I think the um, Peridot color. I went crazy. I've made in the navy. I made so many shawls. I made navy, black, purple, and the green. I have gray, tan, and um, pink still left. In fact, I have enough of the pink to maybe even make a sweater. And I think I, for the purple, I might have some more that I might be able to make a sweater out of. I don't know because I never made a DK weight sweater before. I'm hoping I can wear it. But this is just this was a fun, fun knit. I definitely recommend it. Again, it's the Lady Russell shawl. So I was looking at the, me in the photo, and I was like, oh, yeah, let me talk about that. Because <laughs> I just love the shots. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so another thing that I casted on and finished, because I have a baby shower I'm going to tomorrow. It is my Emi Baby Blanket by Carrie Bustetic Hodge. And it is made out of Karen Simply Soft, the soft pink colorway, size 10 needles. I fell in love with this pattern. In fact, I did something really stupid when I bought this. You could buy the printed one, or you could buy the on like copy. And I was at my mother-in-law's house. I wasn't really paying attention. My husband was like, you have to make the baby blanket. You have to make the baby blanket. So I'm looking through patterns really quick. And I saw this, and I was like, oh, that's a really good deal. Because what I liked about her book was that she not only had this pattern, she you can make a sweater that matches. You can make a kid's sweater that matches. A scarf that matches a hat and she has like three or four different designs in the pattern that has four or five patterns for each design so I just I loved that idea and I accidentally bought the printed one I've been trying to get a hold of her trying to say can you send me the regular one I'll give you the extra I think it was like two dollars more for the printed one and she has not responded I'm very upset about that and I had to make the blanket fast so I had to cast it on and I wasn't even going to download the thing because I was like, I want the printed one. And maybe eventually I'll buy the printed copy. It's such a beautiful book. I mean, it has so many gorgeous patterns. I think it was like 22 patterns in the book. It's a really, really gorgeous thing. So I would definitely recommend looking at it. And this is what it looks like. Ah, look how cute that is. I didn't block this because I kind of liked the bumpiness of it. And I didn't, I didn't like how, I made it in a, size 10. I think it called for a 10 and a half and it wanted Aran weight. I tried buying an Aran weight yarn. I did not like it. It was Burnett chalk, um, chunky baby soft yarn. It pilled already before you even knitted with it. So I could just imagine after you knit with it, it was going to pill. My needle kept going through it. And I just was like, it's not going to show the detail like I wanted. And I know Karen makes this wonderful, I mean, Karen makes this wonderful yarn. And I use this, this is my go-to acrylic yarn, honestly. So this was a worsted weight. I needed Aran weight. So I went down a needle size to accommodate for the weight difference. So I didn't want it very, like, stre like, it's very stretchy, if you see. So I felt like if I did the ten and a half needle, it was going to be even stretchier. And then I ended up adding a repeat over here. And this was supposed to be a square blanket but how I feel about making baby blankets is that I feel like you need it to be bigger and what I like is a lot of the baby blankets I made for my son he still uses them he's three years old he's a very tall three-year-old so he's about um, I'm gonna say he's like a four-year-old height he's very very tall and I just 
I love that he still wears his baby blanket. He puts so much work into these things. You want them to use it for a long time. So that's why this is so long. I think I added an extra repeat and a half to it. And then what I, they wanted you to stop in the pattern right here. So it would be like cut off like that. And I didn't like the way it looked. I liked closing it up. So I closed it up. So I just added like one. You're supposed to repeat the pattern like three times. I only repeated the pattern one time for the ending part of the pattern. So I would get that little closure over here. So I think if I had more time, I would have played with the patterns, so maybe I wouldn't have done this part. I just had that closed up too. So it would match the bottom part more. I don't know. I'm, again, I'm very anal. And that is what I think when I do things. I have to, I just kept going and going and going when I was knitting this. And I was hoping it was going to be big enough. I hope my calculations came out right. I'm actually very happy with how it came out. I know if I had a baby girl, I would definitely make this pattern. The only thing I didn't like about the pattern is you do stuff on the purl side. And I'm not much for one to knit on the purl side. I like to just do straight purl because you get that little break. So I, I had to make sure I had a lot of energy when I was making this and I could concentrate on it because I also feel like when you do on the purl side, it's harder to see the pattern in lace and it's easier to make a mistake. But it was a very simple pattern. You just have to be able to concentrate on it. So I would do this at night when my son went to bed and everything or when I was outside when I was having quiet time, which is very rare in my house. But I did get it done very fast. My husband's been home for a few days and he was helping me out watch him. So I got this done, really, I think I did it in two weeks, I would say. I was very happy about that. So this is going for our friend tomorrow, for a little baby girl. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yay. This is, this is a pretty pattern. Let me show it again. I love this pattern. I, and this, as I said, you can make a sweater with this pattern and everything. I'm thinking I'm going to make the sweater one day. I loved it. And the other patterns in the book were really nice, too. So definitely recommend this book. Now, the other thing I casted on. Where are you? This is a, definitely an interesting knit. It is my Beauty and the Beast shawl by a Very Busy Monkey. The yarn is Once Upon a Corgi. And the No Stuck in a Book on the Aaron um, base. Arion base. Arion base, I think you'd call it. I'm sorry, I'm horrible at pronouncing things. But I love this. And also, it's in my... This is a theme project, people. My Beauty and the Beast bag by Molly, Knits, my Molly Klein Designs. And also, Molly, if you're watching, congratulations. She is now dyeing yarn. I would definitely check out her shop on Etsy. It's so pretty. Bright, vibrant colors she's dyeing. It's gorgeous. And I love the name of her yarns. It's um, Sweet Tea Yarns. So definitely check her out. And she makes these gorgeous project bags. And so I bought this one from her a while ago. Love Beauty and the Beast. So this is my shawl. And what is very interesting about this shawl is the way it's constructed. And you only need one skein of yarn for it, first of all. And you start over here. And you do a cable, cast on, very small stitches. I think it was like 12 stitches. And then you do, I, I love this, this pattern right here. In the pictures, it doesn't do it justice. I don't know if you can see it really well. But in person, it's phenomenal. This I did this um, stitch on the Butterfly Flies Away shawl a long time ago. And I loved it. And I wanted to make a pull, I wanted to use that um, stitch to try to make a pullover one day. In fact, I bought a lot of yarn to make a pullover. I never did it, but I just love the stitch. I didn't realize that was the stitch in the pattern. So when I started making it, I was like, oh my God, it's that. Oh my God, I get to use this stitch again. It's so much fun. So you can do increases in that one. This one you didn't increase, so it shows you how to do the increases, which would be good for a pullover. So I really enjoyed doing this. It was fun. And then you have this beautiful cable pattern. So you go from here. You knit in a big triangle. You, I think it like you increase one stitch every two rows. No, every four rows. I think you do increase. But what is interesting is that then you take it when you're at the end of this whole area, and then you cast on stitches over here, and then you start a different cable where peacock edging. And now you are going to go. Am I going? Okay. Then you're going to go up this way. And then you connect it to this. So there's going to be another, this pattern, you can see right there, 
It's not really showing that well in the video, I don't think. But you do this pattern, and it goes up, and then it's connecting to this. So there's like four different patterns in this one shawl going on. It's a very interesting knit. And then eventually, when you go up to here, then you start decreasing. So I'm having a lot of fun doing this. This cable is... A lot more intuitive than this one. This one I, I had memorized and I was able to do this whole part without looking at the, the pattern. This I'm constantly looking at the pattern. You have two different charts you're doing. So if you want a challenging knit, I would definitely recommend this pattern. I love it. Oh, oh I look at my stitch markers I made. <laughs> because it's Beauty and the Beast. I got my chip. You see chip? Chip. And then, well, it's not really a teacup, but I call it Mrs. Potts. It's so, this is like the Beauty and the Beast thing. And no stuck in a book. Uh, she's always reading. So it's just, this is just such a theme project. I wanted to do it for the Once Upon a Corgi um, Beauty and the Beast cow, but I don't think it's going to be done in time because as I said, this is very complicated, this part. This part was very easy. And I would definitely recommend this to anyone that wants to do a challenging, interesting knit because it's definitely interesting the way it's constructed. I've never done anything this construction before. And I'm loving how it turns out. In fact, I wish it was bigger. I'm hoping when it blocks it would be much bigger so I could, I like to wear my shawls like this. So I know this would definitely be a scarf shawl that I would wrap around my neck, but I would like to wear it like this. And I usually like them to be like this long. That's why I would make, end up be, making really big shawls. So I'm hoping that this is going to stretch out a lot because it's very stretchy if you see. And that would be fabulous because I just, I just enjoyed this so much. It's gorgeous yarn so definitely recommend her yarn as well. Okay. So that's that one. Yes, I cast it on three things recently, and two of the three things I finished. Thank you very much. Plus, everything from the last show I have finished as well. I tell you, I did so many FOs, it's insane. So my next FO is my Snow Day Shawl by Mina Phillips from Knitting x -Back Designs. And I made this in Cascade Yarn Superwash. Am I on the right side? I'm on the wrong side. Here's the right side. So here it is. It's done. I enjoyed this a lot too because of that it, the colors just kept changing. It was very nice and I liked the way it was constructed. I loved the textured pattern. I really, really loved this part right here. I had so much fun knitting this. And the colorways, it starts off, what is going on? I got strawberry cream. Silver, gray, and then lavender. And I'm not really a pink and purple person. Putting, I, I love pink and purple separately. I do not like usually putting them together. But these two worked really well together. Because at one point I was debating on getting navy yarn and adding a fourth color so that they wouldn't touch. But I ended up loving this. It came out great. It's just, let me put this one on too. I'll just keep changing my things. Unfortunately, I put it on my hook and it got a little, yeah, see, there it is. I had it hanging up on a hook and it messed it up a little bit. I have to re-block it. But it came out really nice too. I love this. So I can do it this way or I could do it as. It's a little heavy though for right now, this time of year, to do it like this. So you could do it like this too. That's the way it's made. So this would be good for when you're walking in New York and you need something really warm around your neck. This, I would definitely make in this yarn again. I want to make in a lighter weight yarn so I could wear it in the fall, I think. I loved knitting this. I could knit 10 of these. It was just so much fun. So, And she does amazing designs. She really is a phenomenal designer. I love her stuff. So that was that. And she, I think there's another shawl that she made recently. I want, I was, That's what got me hooked. I saw that shawl, and then I ended up getting this shawl. And I knit this one fast because I had the extra yarn around. I want to wear this because it's a little cold in my house. And it matches my outfit. <laughs> it's my Lady Russell, because anything Jane Austen is always a plus for me. I love Jane. Okay, so I did... Oh, this one. This one. Oh, my God. So much drama. So much drama. This is my Bellevue cardigan by Laura Chaoyu. It's in... I lost the tag to this one. But it's in my... Chattanooga colorway. Again, I'm not pronouncing this right. I am horrible at, at this. It is spelled, if you can't read it on there, where is it? C-H-I-N-C-O-T-E-A-G-U-E. 
Chin Canogly. I'm horrible at this. I know. I can't wait to make this into a shawl. Oh, I love their yarns. I got next time I meet them in Rhinebeck, I gotta ask them how they pronounce their yarns because this is ridiculous. Because it is one of my favorite dyers. Every time I go to Rhinebeck, I have to come home with at least one skein. Usually, it's like two or three of <laughs> of their yarns. I love it. And this one is gonna be a Helen Stewart shawl for the Shawl Society. <gasps> yes, I can't wait. I don't know which one I'm gonna make it with, but there's a beautiful um. What was it? It was a gorgeous, um, like, brownish pink I bought. And it's going to look lovely with this peachy pink. Cannot wait to make that. So, back to what I made with this. I used a size 6, no. Did I use size 6 right now? Which one is it? No, I said 2.5 needle for this one. And this is a, uh, I've been wanting to make a, short sleeve cardigan for quite some time. I wanted to make it for Easter. It did not happen. Oh, no, it happened. It was made for Easter. I made it. I went crazy trying to make it. Easter was so bloody hot this year. It was nuts. I was wearing a tank top in April. Who wears a tank top in April in New York? I was. It, I was so devastated because I went crazy trying to finish this sh sweater. And... It was done, and then you can't wear it. So talk about depressing. But I'm thinking I'm going to wear it to the shawl. Um, Yeah, I'm going to wear it to the shawl. I'm going to wear it to the shower tomorrow. So with a black dress, I think will look nice. So here it is. Is my cardigan. Oh, someone's home. See? And that's the de lace detail on the sleeves. Very excited. Guys, shh. Please shh. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Clover, come here. Come here, Clover. 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 Calm down. People moved in across the street. They're in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm not sure if someone's here from our... Oh, wait. No, someone's here from my house. Okay. So, but this is my cardigan. I love this cardigan. I love this colorway. It's just... It was just a joy to work with this yarn. It really was. I just love that it's lace on the bottom and everything I'm stocking up, so it's very easy to do. Clover! <laughs> the only thing I stunk was I just made it with the yarn. I just, just made it with it. I, I, I basically had to do a garter stitch over here, and I had to do four rows of garter stitch. I did three rows of garter stitch and then cast off pearl. Because I had like that much yarn left over. And I was very upset I didn't have more yarn left over. Because Clover! I am so sorry. But um, I didn't have enough yarn left over to do my cozy memories blanket. So I was very upset about that. And I really want. So I might actually end up buying another skein of these yarns. I would love to put this in a shawl too. And Clover, that's it. Clover, come here. Come here. <laughs> oh my god. I would love to put this into a shawl one day. And then I could maybe even take out the cast off and redo it so it doesn't fold in as much as it does. This is very short edging. And then it folds in, so I was very upset by that. Oh my god, Clover. So I'm sorry I can't I don't I can't pause the video. I don't know how to edit very well. So I, I actually I don't know how to edit at all. I tried editing and it didn't work. So I'm so sorry about all the barking. Oh my god. So, I, that's all the projects I have done so far. And what I wanted to tell you was that I have some very, very... Oh, no, wait, 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 no, no, no. I got one more. I got one more. I'm doing a test knit. I started... I don't have to put it in my notes yet. I'm doing a test knit from Sew Knit Designs again. She's the one that did a I Smell Shawl. I, I Smell Snow Shawl. And this is Cleopatra's Wings in her um was her sock yarn and hi baby hi so this is the shawl and I just started it now basically I'm going to add a, a contrasting colorway to this 
And the reason why it's not done more is because I have been going crazy trying to find a contrasting colorway. I went to my local yarn shop in Nyack, and I got this one. It's a Madeline Tosh Unicorn Tail. I bought three of them, but I still need more yarn, so I actually found a whole skein of this yarn. I'm hoping it comes in soon. So also I have another test knit I'm doing for another person, and the yarn for that test knit is in that order as well. So I'm hoping it comes in soon so I can finish this because then you do like um, lace eyelets over here. But I love it. And it's on a size 6 needle. And it, Bayview Fiber Arts, I'm telling you, she makes the most gorgeous yarn. It's always so soft because I liked her Pine Lake fingering a lot. And now I love this yarn. So, I don't know. And I want to get another skein of this one. And she makes all these, this is basically based on a a duck that she sees. It's called Cleopatra. So she has a whole set. So it's Cleopatra in the snow, which is a white and green. Then Cleopatra at the wharf, which is a green and um, gray. And then this is the regular Cleopatra wings, which is browns and different greens. So I love this yarn. I, this is actually the first scan of yarn I bought from her years ago. No, actually not year, the last year I think it was. She started dying. And I bought that. I loved it so much. I've been hoarding it for the right project. And when I saw this, I just it, I had to make this pattern with this yarn. So I'm just waiting for this yarn. If not, I will start with that one and just start knitting it. Because I need to get it done by the 19th. So you're hoping. So now, back to my exciting news. I'm very excited to tell you. Um, if you're following my podcast, you have noticed that I have started... Um, learning to knit. I'm not knit, learning to knit. Obviously, I knit. Learning to sew, and I have started sewing project bags. I have knit. I have sewed quite a few for myself to teach myself how to do it. And I've been going crazy trying to find how to make a drawstring bag, a double-sided drawstring bag. No one could tell me a pattern. I have been going nuts trying to find one. So finally, one day, I just woke up and it just came to me how to make one. And I made up my own pattern for it. And I hope everyone likes it. And this is actually one it's gonna this one's gonna be in the shop soon I have to finish it it's like on my board right now this one I made for myself and it holds this one's a one to two skein size I love it see it holds a lot see I have three unicorn tails the shawl and a and one skein in there right now and you see how much room I have left like it's a lot it fits in here I think it can even fit three skeins if you really want to get it tight and it's really nice. And what I like is you could there's three di there's, um, four different ways to use these bags. So this is one way. And you could fold it over like this. Then take it out. Then, as I said, there are reversible bags. So you could use it like this. Or you can use it like that. So there's four different ways for one bag you can use. These will be in my shop, um, Crystal T Knits and Etsy. So I definitely, so um, don't definitely check it out. But I would love it if you check them out. And I hope you like what I make. All right, this is again, this is going to be in the shop. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, another one of these. This one's mine. <laughs> and I'm making two different sizes. This is the one to two skein one, and then this is again. This is going to this one's mine, but it's going to be in the shop soon too. This is the sock size. So you can see the difference between the two. I have stuff in these. I'm going to hopefully cast on the Apple Blossom sock by Curiously Handmade. But I just want to show you what you could fit in the sock size. So basically I have two needles. You can fit two socks in here. And then I got skein of yarn. And then I got the contrasting color. All in one little bag. So this is like the perfect sock bag. So that's what you can fit in that one. So let me show you the ones that are in that are going in my shop right now. So it's a sock size of a Japanese cherry blossom little girls going on. And then inside is this pretty mauve. Then you got this French pattern. If I'm gonna say Marie Antoinette on it. Just, I love anything French, so I have so many French pattern fabrics. I just go crazy. And it's got a nice mauve on the inside. Then this is just some cute little stamps from around the world. It's a lot of pink I've made recently. And then again, the mauve on the inside. 
and this is the one. Th these the last two were the one to two skein size. This is the one to two skein size as well of the Japanese print. So you can, uh, actually, let me show you. Let me put the two of them together. See the difference. And then what you could also do is if you want a bigger one, like a three to four skein one, or even a sweater size one, let me know. I can make it. It's very easy for me to change the size of these. Um, this is a sock size one of the peacocks. So these are all going to be in my shop. I'm so excited. I finally got time to, well, I finally figured out how to make it. I found out I was having problems with the other ones I was making because the zippers aggravate me, apparently. I love making drawstring bags. Obviously, you see how many I made. And I made these quite fast compared to the zipper because the zipper kept aggravating me. And I will show you two more. I, I will eventually make zippered bags. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them. So I have, this is a zipper one. Um, I think this fits like two to three skeins. But what I want to do is I'm going to put, put a little hook on there. And then you could decide if you want a wristlet. Or you can buy an extra one to make it into a pocketbook. Or over the body pocketbook. You can buy different size straps for it. I'm going to start doing with that too. Um, the sock size and the one to two skein, I'm pretty much going to have it hooked on there like this. If you would like it to have the key ring, I can change it to that. It's no big deal for me. I think I might just um, charge an extra $2 to add this on there because of the metal thing and it's more of this fabric being used. But I can easily do that. I Definitely for the bigger ones, I like doing that because they don't fit in my pocketbooks as well as these little ones. So I find when I'm, I'm at my mother-in-law's house a lot and I'm bringing my knitting and it's just awkward carrying all these things. So I like to have it as a pocketbook. So my big one, sometimes I put like two or three projects in the big one and I'll just carry that over there. So that's why I liked making this into a pocketbook. I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but you have the option that this can turn into a pocketbook. And if you rather have it just plain attached, I can easily attach it to the zippered ones or the bigger drawstring bags. And then this is a four to five skein one I made of the Disney villains. Actually, I made this purposely for my um, my Exploration Station shawl. I already have the yarn in there and everything. I'm very excited about that, but I have four skeins of yarn in here. See, one, two, three, four. And I think I could fit even more, honestly. Because it's like, look how much room I got in this thing. So I might even use it as a sweater bag. And I might be selling these too, the zippers. It's just, I don't know. This got an easier way to put zippers in. I don't know. The zippers like to fight with me. So it takes hours for me to do zippers. And also, I prefer drawstring bags, honestly. Because I said, I just throw them in my pocketbook and I go. And I noticed my ones that were my drawstring bags... I was gravitating more to when I left the house as opposed to anything, even like the Smalley Klein design one, I was still gravitating towards the Slips of Studio one that was a drawstring bag. So I seem to like drawstring bags a lot better than um, zippered ones. So but I will make some eventually to sell. Again, I have that little buckle thing for the bigger bag, so you can make it into a pocketbook if you want. And this one, I actually put it on one on each side because it's so big, so it could turn into a pocketbook. So I could make pocketbooks for you if anyone wants pocketbooks. So I'm very excited about this because I, the step one on my shop, I'm hoping to dye yarn. I'm going to say by the fall, I'm going to say I'm hoping to have yarn in my shop. I'm very excited about that because I'm dying to dye yarn dying to die <laughs> and, and I'm just so excited that I finally was able to make these products like sell them and I enjoy making I actually enjoy sewing now since I figured out how to make these bags and what I like about my bags too is is also not only is it interchangeable but then I add this little extra ruffles I like ruffles and I remember I was bothering my friend Katie she makes bags too she's um um what is it Katie did a hand... Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Katie. I'm a blank. She has a shop, too, on Etsy. And she, um... I was saying I want a drawstring bag. She does zippered bags. And I was going crazy trying to tell her how to make a bag. And she's looking at me like, what? I was like, I want something round, like, and roughly. And she's like, what? And, of course, she couldn't find a pattern either. Because there is no pattern online for a double-sided drawstring bag or for a ruffle. So I was very happy I figured out how to make one. And I, I just love the effect because when you do this, this looks so cute. You gonna do it for me? 
And look how cute that is. A little ruffle on there. As opposed to just having the drawstring on the top. So I really enjoyed this one a lot. And then this is what it looks like when it's fall. And there's something in it. This I think this one came out my this was my favorite one, believe it or not. My Harry Potter. Look how cute that is, the little extra ruffle up there. I love it. So I hope you like them. I hope you check out my Etsy shot. Again, it's www.etsy.com slash crystal teen slash shop slash crystal teen nets. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And I will see you hopefully in, I'm going to say, three weeks, two to three weeks, I'm hoping. I will have a lot more stuff knitted on and hopefully more bags in my shop. And if you like this um, episode, please subscribe. And we, as soon as I hit 75 subscribers, I will be making a knit along of the Sophia shawl. It is, um, I already have my yarn picked out. It's my Periwinkle Sheep Yarn in the Sapphire colorway. I'm very excited. I bought that last year at Rhinebeck. She is a wonderful dyer, and she's very nice. And she, um, I asked her, could she um, dye this up for me? My friend bought it about two years ago, and I loved it. And I was like, I have to have that same yarn. I went crazy trying to get that yarn. <laughs> so I got, I'm very excited about making this shawl. So please subscribe so we can start doing the knit along. Very excited. And I'm probably, hopefully, going to have cast it on by time next time the exploration station shawl and the apple blossom socks because i need to get a pair of socks every month because i want to do the box the socks box of socks cal i think it is yes by full and vine very excited and then i'm gonna hopefully have a shawl society shawl cast it on oh my god did you see the new pattern oh my god i love the shawl society by helen stewart of curious handmaids I was drooling, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me just go like crazy for her new pattern. It's absolutely stunning. I would definitely check it out. She basically sends out a pattern every six months, and you can, um, every month is a new pattern that comes out, and it was, I think it was like $13 for the patterns. So definitely check her out. And here's my son. In <laughs> want to say hi? Okay, apparently I am going now, because my son wants to say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Good boy. <laughs> Oh, I love you. You like being on TV? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Say bye. Bye. Okay. Have a nice week. Bye.